Learning Lab by CertiProf es un espacio para promover y compartir el conocimiento con invitados que tienen la pasión por enseñar e instruir a las personas en su camino profesional. Ok, good afternoon, everyone. Hello, all of you um, live on Zoom and LinkedIn Live. Welcome once again to this Learning Lab session by CertiProf. Today, we are pleased to have with us Alexandre Figuideiro, a CertiProf partner and a leader in, um, in, in transformation within the organizations in Brazil. Alexandre, it is a great pleasure to have you here. We appreciate you once again here with us and welcome. Yeah, nice. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Just so you know, the, to all of you, the attendees, we're going to be answering all of your questions during the session. We're going to be talking about Agile Coach and how to properly implement it within the organizations and lead the change. So if you have any questions during the session, don't hesitate to leave them on the chat and we'll be addressing those questions properly. So welcome. Nice. So um, let me let me share my screen just a second, please. Great. So as uh, Santiago said, I'm feel free to interrupt me anytime. I don't want to be here uh, as a class teacher. Yeah. We are here to exchange experience. Let's talk a little bit about Agile Coach. It's a great opportunity to talk about and see what we can do in order to bring the agility concept to companies. Yeah. Uh, just to introduce myself, <clears throat> my name is Alexandre Figueiredo. I'm from São Paulo, Brazil. I don't know if you know this. Uh, our state here in Brazil is a huge state. And I've been working here for uh, almost 25 years. So I have a, such a large experience working with, especially with project management, yeah, process management and quality management. So um, I had the opportunity to work with different segments different companies nowadays. Um, I run my old company yeah, since 1913, uh, Figueiredo Consultoria Empresarial Limitada, located here in Sao Paulo, where we um, work with consulting, with training, with implementation of uh, systems, uh, collaborative uh, platforms, uh, applying private and uh, corporate trainings. Yeah. Just talk a little bit about my career. I started uh, in the early 19s, yeah, uh, studied chemistry in high school. So I had the opportunity to join some um, companies uh, specializing in plastics and rubber development and the manufacturer. Yeah. After that, I started uh, studying my engineering course in chemistry in production, where the first time I had the opportunity to get in touch with uh, project management uh, discipline. So in the automotive industry, uh, I stayed for almost 10 years. We started uh, working, my first uh, challenge was to implement the ISO 9000. ISO 9000 is a international norm in order to uh, establish the process, the instructions, the procedures, and in turn of all departments in the company. Yeah, And uh, early on, we would start to implement that. It was a big change for the company. But it uh, was a good opportunity to have a, a holistic view about the business. It was a German uh, company uh, that was specialized to produce car seats. Yeah, and uh, we used to supply all OEMs here in Brazil with some others abroad. And uh, the company in that time used to have something around 3,000 employees. So it's not such a small company. Uh, but it was a great opportunity in order to understand how we change a company yeah, from a traditional point of view in order to have at least a process approach yeah, and implement indicators, uh, KPIs, to implement a new uh, philosophy of working, uh, some methods from uh, Toyota system and so on. And uh, there was a great opportunity to start working with project management at that time. 
working with different OEMs. After that, I started to work in the uh, insurance company, American insurance company, having the opportunity also to implement PMO, uh, to build the project manage systematic and have an approach to develop uh, systems yeah, for car dealerships. Yeah. And then uh, we had a startup company in um, 1911. We developed system as well as consulting, implementing, and changing uh, um, the culture and digital transformation for many uh, companies in the uh, abroad Brazil. Yeah, nice. Just to give a, a short uh, introduction about myself. Yeah, uh, here I separate Santiago some books which I would like to recommend. I think it's nice to have. First of all, of course, our agile coach uh, professional certificate material is a nice base to which one want to get the certification at. But here I have some um, books that I think uh, it's important, like uh, The Essence of Agile Coach, uh, the, the book of John Dew about the book ERs, Design Thinking from Tim Brown, The Sprint Method from Jake Snap, Project Model Covers, yeah, it's a nice book uh, about this approach too, is a Agile Method also, Scrum, yeah, and uh, Product, uh, backlog building as well as a uh, Canva. I think this is the basic for someone that wants to start learning about agile coach and to start to change the companies from inside. Yeah. I'd like to start here, uh, giving just an, uh, a time frame for what happened in the past. As I said to you, I started my career in the nineties. You know, so it was a long time ago, you know, so I uh, have a, a little bit more of 25 years of experience. So in that time, in the 90s, especially here in Brazil, in the automotive industry, what we have was management 1.0, right? So everything was uh, mat mat uh, matrix, structure, right? Top down, yeah? No, uh, how can I say, free space for change, innovation, opinion, or whatever. Just like almost everything in that time, was like this. So for this, my terrorism was the situation that we had in that time. So uh, that was the moment that I started to implement the ISO 9000. So you can imagine in a super hard structure in a company, very traditional, when you have to implement the change. I'm not talking about agile culture. I'm talking about implementation of ISO 9000. This is something that is, uh, how can I say, the pillars of the quality systems, the pillars for who wants to bring a process management or project management inside the company. Yeah? So that was a very hard moment because we had a, to remove a lot of those barriers. Yeah, We had a lot of resistance. We had to convince the people to make complex diagnoses, yeah? to try to have a plan to implement these changes. Yeah, So that was a, a, a big um, challenge to implement the first uh, certification. Of course, later we had a uh, after ISO 9000, we have an ISO 14000 of our environment. The point we, we had a key S9000 uh, American norm. We had a PDA6, a German norm. After that, ISO TS 60949, which was a, how can I say, a mix between ISO 9000 is just in this uh, automotive norms. So it was a very hard moment and competitive moment because uh, the companies here in the Occident will try to implement the benefits of Toyota quality system. Yeah. So the Japanese industry, they were much ahead of, our, of us here. So we are, were trying to implement these uh, norms in order to improve the quality of the product and how to aggregate value to our clients. Yeah. So finally, we could... Uh, Climb to the management top uh, 2.0. So then we had better scorecard, KPIs, Lean Six Sigma, TKM, and the total quality management. We had these norms implemented. So it was a big step here, yeah? several years to implement this in one company. Yeah? But nowadays we had a new challenge. Yeah? So that's why we are here to talk how to take this step from management 2.0. And sometimes I can tell you that the majority of the companies are still in the 1.0. So how to jump from here to here is a big challenge. Yeah. And um, every company I go, 
yeah, due to my uh, consulting business or due to trainings, we have this challenge because the companies think they are in the management 2.0, but they don't, yeah. Especially companies that are so traditional, yeah. So we have to prepare the environment in order to bring a new approach like uh, self-organization or to squats, yeah, to even to implement the project management uh, environment with procedures, yeah, because normally they don't have almost anything from the management 2.0. So nowadays, that's what I think is the biggest challenge. And the traditional companies now want to have this step. They hear a lot. People are getting training. People are getting certification, right? So they want to make this kind of a move. But they cannot do it by themselves. They need a professional to apply this change. They need a professional to help them, to guide them, and to show the way and which steps they have to take in order to make this kind of evolution. And normally, this professional is called like agile coach. This is a professional that must have a holistic view of the business, must understand what is management 1.0, from where we came from why they have these problems, why they have this resistance. Sometimes the management, the top management, they take 20, 30 years to become a manager or a director in a big company. And then someone comes in with a lot of ideas, with a lot of a new vocabulary, and not a new methods like a OKR, like design thinking, Canvas, Scrum, Kanban, and et cetera. So it's, um, you have to prepare the way in order to bring this new method of work because it changes everything, yeah? And from now, we have a lot of a, uh, new challenges in the market. We have to live with Internet of Things, robotics, matching learn, big data, artificial intelligence, and finally blockchain, yeah? So this has changed all business in Earth, yeah? Does it matter if it's a traditional company like a automotive company, or aircraft company, or building construction, they will have to work with that. But uh, the first time I went to Germany was in 1999. Yeah. So when I entered in the headquarters of the company I was to work for, I could not see one human in the production line. It was just robots. In 1999, it took a while to make this change here in Brazil, in the company. It took some years, yeah, but we got there, yeah. Not so automatically like in, in Germany, but we had a lot of robots, yeah. Nowadays, we are not only talking about robots in production line. We are talking about process, administrative process, yeah. So the majority of the, the projects I get as a consultant is regarding systematization of a process, systematization of a project, yeah. So uh, this is a big challenge. And how to incorporate this new approaches, these new technologies, and considering that we are coming from here, management 2.0, 1.0. If you are talking about a startup, this is easier because you can bring some new uh, methods. They, you can bring this new uh, approach. Yeah, But for, uh, on the other hand, they don't have the background for the past. Yeah, so it's a different type of difficulty, yeah. But that's the situation we have nowadays, yeah. And how to live in this environment, traditional project management, agile project management, traditional business, agile business. This is how we have to focus our efforts and learn a lot in order to support these companies to take a, a different step. We have, a, we have some basic difference between these approaches. And for example, in Agile, we are focused more in people. In a waterfall, a traditional approach for project management, we talk about process. Documentation, minimal required. Why? Because we want to work in an um, uh, empiric environment. So we don't have a defined scope. We will develop a backlog. We will develop our user stories. We will develop our product according to the values that we want to add to our clients, yeah? In the traditional approach, we are we pass months 
make a plan. I remember my projects used to have a 10,000, 15,000 tasks. Yeah. So when you finish your planning, you finish your Gantt graphic, you finish your scope, your risk analysis, your cost analysis, your time plan, and all of the plans related to your project, the last thing you want is a change. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if the client, if the customer or if the user want to change, you don't want to change because it's going to be a mess to replan everything. An agile approach, this is not an excuse that we want to change faster in order to bring value to our client. That's why we don't plan a lot in the beginning. Yeah? So we are open to have a change during the, the project yeah, in our business, in our environment. So that's why we don't have a, a, a exhaustive planning during the, the project. Yeah. So here we have uh, some uh, considerations in regards of an organization, how to organize it. Yeah, it's completely different than the uh, centralized and the uh, metrics organization, which are top down. How to go to a traditional company and say, now you have to be how to organize it. It's going to be a mess. You have to bring this approach slowly have to explain to people how it works, how to have a, uh, a servant leader, and how to build a team which is able to perform a job without having a boss on top of them, you know, guiding the people. And yeah? this is the idea. Management style, decentralize it, yeah? Where we have in a traditional business, normally it's absolutely centralized, it, yeah? So we have a very rigid uh, structure, yeah? So these are some examples of the difference between those. So normally uh, in the companies, you will find this structure. To bring this structure to this structure, you know, is a big change in the culture. And when we talk about people, nothing is easy, yeah? We have to con convince people to change their mindset, to change what they think to change how they work in the daily basis. Yeah. And sometimes the company is very old. They have a procedures, they have a internal rules and the methods of work. So how to bring this situation to this situation. Yeah. Here you can see, for example, the behavior of a traditional organization is a complete matrix a structure. Yeah. It's top down. Normally the objectives, right? Normally all the direction, uh, the resource and so on. Yeah. So we stop down and here in the agile organization is a, we have a collaboration and the cooperation we must have a servant leaders in order to provide direction to the teams. Right. So this is a big challenge. That's why the uh, agile coach uh, must uh, step forward and try to support the company to change. In regards of a project management, measurement, uh, normally we have a waterfall approach. Yeah, there's a sequence, since the requirements until the deployment of the product. Uh, despite the fact that uh, some companies can work in waves, they don't work straight in a line. Yeah, my my project was not based on that. Yeah, it, even the early two thousand. Yeah. We used to work by ways, something very similar to Scrum, but we didn't didn't know how to call that as a Scrum, yeah. Because especially in Brazil, I can tell you that Scrum is you know more popular than ten years ago yeah, and not in that time. But uh, the intuition, yeah, and in how you 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 manage your project normally, if you can work by waves. Even if it's a traditional project, you have a better results. Imagine when you have a completely uh, empiric and uh, evolutionary project inside of your company using, for example, uh, methods like uh, Scrum. Yeah, and this is the difference. In the traditional uh, team, we have a normally a project manager. It's a team leader. It's top down. He represented the the C level. Yeah. And uh, all the colleagues that work in the project needs to follow the rules and the direction of this person. Different in this situation, agile teams, 
we have a self-organized group and we have a servant leader in order to facilitate their job. We can have, a, for example, a Scrum, a product owner, which we will bring the direction, uh, we will bring the desires of the stakeholders to the team, support in order to build a backlog, but how the product will be uh, developed is a decision by the team. So it's a different approach compared with this situation, which is top down. Yeah. The agile mindset is a is an interesting thing because when we consider that almost all of these values, all of these principles, yeah, came from Toyota. Yeah, people normally don't know that. Yeah, but um, when the movement, the agile movement, started in the nineties, yeah, because they were trying to develop software in a different way because in the traditional way, it was not possible. The results were not good. And I faced that also when I tried to develop a software for the first time using my traditional uh, means, my traditional methods. Yeah, uh, I had to use, for example, Kanban. I didn't know Scrum, so I tried to use Kanban. It was easier for me to write the specifications, the requirements I want for my uh, developers, yeah? And uh, I used the Kanban in order to track how the activities were performed. Yeah, I didn't know that, but I was starting working like a um, agile method. Like for example, Scrum. We used to have some cadency. We used to have some meetings, intermediate meetings. We used to have a weekend meetings. Yeah, and then once a month we used to have a project review. So very similar to the Scrum approach. And I didn't know that because it came to me from the Toyota way of quality system way to work as well as the Kanban approach. And the Lean Manufacturing. Because the, the Spraction Lean came from the Lean Manufacturing, from Toyota also, yeah? Where you can have to work without waste, yeah? Without uh, scrap, you know, without uh, doing something that don't uh, add value to your client, yeah? So it, all of this came from Toyota, yeah? And what is coach? Yeah, Coach is a approach in order to support professionals or company, yeah? Uh, which has to be based on the human being, yeah? We have to bring methods to work, techniques, tools, models. We have to have a lot of skills. So we must know about many, many types of methods, tools, softwares, systems. Have to be able to train people, to convince people to change. Have to be open to listen, yeah, to understand their needs, how to support people to talk to each other in order to develop products and service and solution in a collaborative way. Yeah. So that's the, the, the <clears throat> responsibility of agile culture. And we have to understand that we have some steps in order to bring a change. I started uh, a short time ago, a big project in the South of Brazil, in a huge company with more than 40,000 people. Yeah very traditional company, but they want to change. Yeah. They talk about agility and they think they can resolve the things faster. Agility doesn't mean faster. Yeah. People think that, oh, if uh, I implement agile method, my project, we have a shorter duration. It's not true. Yes. When we say agility, yeah, when we want to implement agile uh, method, Yes, because we want to improve the communication. Yes, we want to improve the way we collaborate to resolve problems as fast as we can, how to add value as fast as we can, how we deal with the problems as fast as we can. That's the contest. That is not uh, about finishing the project before, just like this. Yes, we have to change the complete company. So, for example, uh, 
to prepare the diagnosis, yeah, I took more than 80 meetings. Eight zero. Yes. So we have to talk with a lot of people. Yeah. Have to understand their problems, understand their needs, understand the context in order to propose a solution. Yeah. So we have several initiatives. We start, for example, um, implement a system in order to improve their communication, systemize some process instead have uh, thousands of meetings or emails or chats in WhatsApp or Teams or whatever. Yeah. Made some uh, squads. We create some war rooms in the company. We implement a PMO in the company. We train the people involved. So many, many initiatives. Yeah. Of course, in the beginning, we have a what? Heroes, failures, frustration. We have a various. We have people coming with uh, bad mood. People that don't want to change. People don't want to work in a squad. People don't want to work together. They want to stay in their department. They want to keep the matrix structure. Yeah. Because they don't want to change. Yeah. It is a big problem because they, the company wants. So we have first the maturity of the company. We have second the maturity of the people and the maturity of the departments. Yeah. So all of this bring us to errors, failures, and frustration, yeah? But we have to learn with that. We have to learn with those mistakes. We have to talk to people to convince that, that, okay, we respect their needs, we respect their situation, but they have to change, and we are there in order to support them to go through this process, yeah? So after that, we can bring a new practice, a new view, a new approach, a better communication, yes, and bring light to a very normal dark situation where you don't know the objectives you don't know the metrics you don't know what the objectives for the projects for the process what they have to develop yeah so when all these people are organizing the squads in a single place yeah they can talk to each other fast they can resolve fast the problems that's what we want a fast answer for the problems, yeah? So normally what we have is like this. We have resistance. We have chaos. After that, we can come to a conclusion that the change is needed and we are showing the way. The Agile coach needs to show the way in order to bring transformation, yeah? After that, we have integration and then we move forward. Yeah, say it, Santiago. Thank you, uh, Alexander. We got a question from yep. uh, Oliver Corsino. He he says, as an agile coach, what tools can we use to attack those frustration and learn from our mistakes? Is there any specific tools that we can use? Well, we have to we have to um, how can I say uh, engage people. This is something very difficult. Yeah? How to engage people? Normally, uh, if you bring all of them to um, exercise, yeah, we show them the situation we have today and what we want for the future and ask them to bring the solutions, the steps. What's the steps number one, number two, number three? And let them give their opinions, give some post-its, yeah, let them exercise, put in the wall, make it votation, elections, you know, give some uh, spots so in order they can express their needs, yeah? And then all together, all the people will decide what is better. So if this is not something that comes from you. It comes from the community. Understand what I mean? Because we, we have to understand that as an Agile coach, yeah, you are a facilitator. You are supporting them to cross this way, yeah, this journey, right? But they want to come to a conclusion that they want to cross. You know, you show the door, yeah? So when you bring these um, initiatives, when you have this kind of uh, organized brainstorm or perhaps a design thinking, support them to build it, 
by themselves, even when you want to influence the result. I don't know if I'm clear, you know? You you know what they need, yeah? So you try to influence in order to make they yourselves to come to this conclusion, to the conclusion that you want, yeah? Because you know the journey, yeah? But they are inside of the problem. Normally, when you are outside, you have a better view, yeah? For example, the last uh, three years, I, I believe I passed for, I don't know, 50 companies, 50 different companies. It's amazing. Yeah? Doesn't matter the segment, doesn't matter in what product they, they were, or if it's a service, or if it's an industry, or if it's a bank, or if it's an insurance company. It doesn't matter. They almost have always the same problems. They have a problems with communication. We have a problems with requirements from the client. They have a problems with delays. They have a problems with project budget. Yeah. They don't know uh, how to work together as a team. They work in different departments. So everyone have a, their own uh, interests. Yeah. So when you show all this and say, okay, you have the problem. Now we work together and make this we draw how to come from the point A to the point B and let them think it. They give their opinion. Yeah. Uh, in a kind of a democracy, but it's not a democracy. You understand? Because you want to guide them through a way to bring change. You know? I don't know if uh, I was clear. Yes. And uh, by the way, we, we received another one. Ah, yeah, great. Uh, for example, when the transformation is not completed in terms of, for example, we were talking about management 1.0. So that evolved into management 2.0. When that doesn't happen, do you think it has to do with all the employees within the organization or just those on the top, the decision makers? Well, telling the truth for you, never finish the transformation yeah we will never stop transforming anymore believe in me you know i live at a time when i started my career we didn't have a mobile we didn't have a internet we didn't have a social media we didn't have a blockchain we didn't have a artificial intelligence we didn't have anything you know nowadays um we have big changes in perhaps six and six months you know so we will never stop changing so, uh, of course, when we want to bring a company from management 1.0 to 2.0, you know, in this case, it's top down. The change doesn't come from below. Perhaps you can try. I tried that. Yeah. The company uh, reacted because it was someone from below tried to change from the, the people in the top. So the tribe for 10 years. Uh, try to fire me 10 times, you know? So at least once a year, they try to fire me, yeah? Because the directors used to react. They didn't want that change. Why you want to change, you know? We are living with that for decades. But since in the beginning, especially because I started my first project with an ISO 9000, it's a big change because it's a process approach. A process approach is different than a department approach. Because you have a process, like for example, a commercial process, right? You want to sell something. You have to cross the, the company in order to have a, a offer, in order to have a contract to sign with your clients. You have to work with the engineering, product engineering, industrial engineering, quality, supply department, uh, production, or logistics cost department. So then you have an offer, perhaps the, the lawyers and that. So then you have an offer. Yeah? So you cross the company. It's a process. Yeah. So when the company is uh, separated by departments, you have a hard life. You know? When you want to manage a project in this atmosphere, so is a chaos. You get crazy. So of course, you have to convince first the top manager. Yeah. Have you more questions? I like yeah, when people talk to me. I don't, I don't like to talk alone here. <laughs> we, we got another one. Yeah. 
So uh, as an agile coach to the industry, I'm asked in contributing to the evolution of their scaled agile strategy and transformation journey, where should I start with or the approach should I, or, or I'm sorry, or which approach should I take? I think uh, we have first to align the objectives. What are the objectives? Why we want to implement Agile? Why? Yeah, because I heard in the seminary, because I had a training, so I think it's nice. Yeah, because it's vital for the survivor of the company. The marketing is changing. The client is changing, right? Why we want that? If we understand the whys, yeah, perhaps you have a more strength, you know, you you don't need to convince people as agile because they know the answer. And this answer must come from them, not from you. Because telling the truth, if you normally when I go to a company as a consultant and uh, I want to help them to resolve the problems, sometimes I don't say that, oh, I will implement a new method. I will implement the OKR. I, I don't say that. I will implement, for example, Scrum. I don't say that, you know? You don't start with naming stuffs, you know? You start by the pain. What's the pain? Why they are calling you your help? They have to tell you. And then you say, okay, you have a pain. You have a problems. As every company, every company has problems, right? So they have a problems. First of all, they have to accept the problems. Second, they want to tell you what they want. What's the solution? I want less complaint. I want to deliver a good product. I want to survive in this crazy market that we have today. What we want, you know? So then we start drawing the steps until we get there. So we will step the first step. Okay, let's establish the objectives. What are the objectives? And what are the metrics? In order to prove that I, I reached that objective, everybody needs to agree with that. Okay, nice. Then we start doing the diagnosis. As I said, it took 18 meetings, 80, 80. It took me a long time, a lot of patients, talking to a lot of people. Yeah, Each meeting, five to 10 people talking to me about all the problems, the situation, and I start to draw all the process. The formation comes from here, go to there, who approves, who needs to be aware of that. What's the flow? When you draw all the flow, you get an agreement with that. Because normally, when you want to improve a situation in a company, you don't change the flow, the process first. You know, Better, you systemize the problems they have. Understand? Because normally this is a chaos. Because it, the processes are not systemized. Yeah? So first of all, you fix that. And then when they start to learn about their difficulties, their problems, we indicators, you know, we KPIs and so on. And then you can evolve step by step. I'm talking about a company that don't have anything, you know, which is normally the situation, right? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, nice. So the coach, yeah, must be committed with some things. Huh? I'm a driven by your goals. As I said, you have to establish the goals. The client, the company, the top management, they need to tell you the, the, the goals, not you. If you come from outside saying, okay, the goals is like this, people will not follow you. I am your guest, you know? The people that is inviting you to support them, you know? You're not there to force anybody to, to do anything, yeah? Share knowledge, yeah? You are coming from outside to bring knowledge. So as I said, in the last three years, I'm working 50 different companies. Yes, I have, I don't know, 25 years of experience. I'm coming to bring my knowledge. We can exchange knowledge. We can exchange experience. But normally you're coming from outside. If you are coming from inside, there are some advantages and perhaps some problems because you were involved with the problems in, in, inside of the company. Yeah? 
respect learning do not uh, know everything yeah you are always learning because you went to the, the other's house you know you have to understand their context yeah? if if it's a big company yeah and they are in the market for a long time you have to respect that you know they come to this situation to today so they fight for their market you know they have a good product but they want to move forward so you have to respect that also yeah Offer compaction, yeah. <laughs> and look for a word, yeah, in order to add value to the situation. Yeah? Some values and princi principles of culture. Respect, value, transparency, collaboration, humidity, yeah. I can't tell you much more, you know, but uh, I think this is the basic, yeah. We don't know everything, yeah. But we can add value to the company, to the teams, to the people, to bring them from the point A to the point B. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, coach mo uh, most important habits and adv uh, advice: uh, lead with the example, keep balance, set a realistic pace, take care of language, act as a server leader. Yeah, learn about yourself. So, as I said, we cannot judge anybody. Yes, we cannot judge what they are doing. As I said, if they are in the market for dozens of years, yeah, we have to respect that. Yeah. So that's because they have a good process. Perhaps it's not documented, they are not systemized, but they have a process, they have a culture, they have a product, we have a service. Yeah. But we want to support them, you know. So uh, once I, uh, I took the direction of a group, of car car dealers in the south of Brazil, and, and I came from São Paulo to the south of Brazil, and uh, there are big difference in regards of uh, culture, just because of the state. Brazil is a large uh, country, yeah. So um, <clears throat> when I start work there, people used to tell me, "Oh, you don't understand our lives here because they are from São Paulo," you know. So we have to consider this cultural aspects also. It's not just the company environment, but you have the place, perhaps you have the region, the city, the state or the country, different country. You have to consider about this difference in the culture. Yeah? Of course, we have to have some uh, fundamental uh, competencies. Yeah? We have to understand the business. We have to perhaps understand the product. Yeah, we have to know how to deal with people. We have to know how to share knowledge. You have to know how to teach people to support them to pass by this transformation. Yeah, you of course you have to know about the agile methods. You have to know about tools, systems, techniques, artifacts. You know everything that is necessary in order to implemented this difference uh, inside of the company. Yeah? So then we have a process, yeah? as always, it's a project. You know, you, hum you come from a point A and then you want to reach the point B. And what's the point B? It must be agreed. The people must understand what they want. Yeah. So we start by a diagnosis. Yeah. Then we get an agreement. They must agree, everybody. Top down, you know, everybody must be aware about what we want to achieve. Yeah. And then we have a, to work as a project. You know, you will make a plan, you have to organize the tasks. And perhaps this is uh, your first opportunity to use the methods, the agile methods, in order to implement the project. Why not use the OKR method? Establish the OKR, the objectives and key results. So it's the first opportunity to share knowledge, to share uh, experience. Why not to draw this change, this new process using, for example, uh, design thinking? Why not document the stuff, the business, the project, the commitments? Yeah, the in the for example canvas. Why don't you organize your project using the Scrum method? Yeah. This is a good opportunity. Scrum with Kanban, for example. 
it's a good opportunity to uh, start working uh, in the change in the company, use agile methods. Yeah, you can use also the agile coaching DMA. is a great, great uh, guide. You know, because here you can almost track what you have to take in consideration when you want to implement a agile uh, culture or uh, agile project in the company. Yeah, so. What are the barriers? How you work with that? The compet uh, competencies development, awareness, ownership, you know? So we start to understand the context you have in order to improve the situation. But everybody is in a different moment of this journey. Yeah. A big company, yeah, you have people, they are waiting for the changes, you know? Some people are okay, they are walking, yeah? Some are growing, you know? They are in the beginning of this journey, in this process, yeah? And you have a people in different moments. Sometimes you have a people running, yeah? And normally, nowadays, those which are running or flying, they leave the company because they don't want to live in an environment that don't want to change anymore. Yeah. So how to hold, you know, these talents? Yeah. We have to enjoy the fact that we have a people with different maturity to support us to change the company. Maybe they are the agile leaders that can be used inside of the company, working with the agile coach, you know, in order to bring these colleagues which are here in this situation, you know, to a different perspective, to a different situation. Yeah? So, of course, alone, Agile Coach is not able to change a company. Yeah, You have to have supporters. Yeah, So if we can work with um, some methods, yeah, don't try to do everything at the same time, but if you can start with some methods, and my recommendation is to use these methods uh, in your implementation, yeah? So establish the OKRs, make a design thing to establish the process, you know, what you want to change the company, document everything in the canvas, in different type of canvas we have, yeah? And use the Scrum with Kanban in order to develop your initiatives, for example, if you are working the company, you have to implement a system. I don't know which system in order to bring more, uh, how can I say, uh, clarity or to bring more uh, awareness about this project situation, collaborative system like Monday, like a pipefile, like a Sana or whatever system. Yeah? You can use systems, yeah? to implement this chain to support you. And you can use those methods in order to teach people how to work with that, yeah? That's why I create this framework, which is clear, yeah? So we start everything with a OKR. So you should not have a project, for example, your company, if it's not provided by a OKR. It's normally the companies that you have uh, several meetings at every meeting you have uh, dozens of uh, projects at the next meeting nobody remembers anymore the projects we're talking about because nobody is the owner nobody cares about that anymore they just want to put more projects on the table yeah so we should not be allowed to open a project in the company if we don't have a okr yeah so okay we have a okr is uh, uh is a way to uh protect the company from bad ideas, you know, from top management or whatever, yeah, because they are allowed only to have a three or four OKRs in a year, yeah, so they have to think a, a lot before establishing these OKRs. After that, okay, how we are going to implement these OKRs, all this product, all the service, or the improvement that we want? Okay, we have a design thinking. It's a great method in order to get a consensus. People will work in the solution, as I said. 
every initiative you have a, of agile coach, you should use design thinking to do that. Because then you have a consensus and people understand how to get from the point A to the point B. Then you can use several canvas in your work. You can use the problem and so the opportunity canvas. You can use the persona canvas. You can use the empathy canvas. You can use uh, the business canvas. You can use the project model canvas. You can use uh, market, uh, digital marketing canvas, whatever. There are too many possibilities. Uh, if you, you don't find in the market a uh, uh, canvas that you like, you create yours. But the important thing is that the canvas method is nice because you bring to the light information. It's not in the brief. It's not your computer. It's in the wall or in uh, collaborative platform like Miro or whatever, you know, so whether you have this information published, yeah, and then you develop your project with Scrum, with Kanban, so then people can understand what's going on, yeah, people can have their daily Scrum meetings, they can have their project reviews, they can have a retrospective until they finish the implementation, yeah, so this is a simple a set of methods that can work together. They're very powerful. Yeah. And when you do that, you start collecting good results since the very beginning. Okay, Santiago, if we have more questions, I think that's the moment. Yeah. Yeah. We have um, another question. Let me give it to you. Francine Barbosa is asking how can an agile coach act? to have or form a major and efficient team. Uh, could you repeat, please? Sure. How, how, how can, can, yeah, an agile coach form or develop a mature and efficient team? Nice. First, uh, we have to uh, find out the talents inside, right? If you don't have a talents inside with the knowledge, so then you can teach them, yeah? You have to teach them. Agile coach need to teach people. If you don't have these skills, so you can hire someone else to do that. You can contract a third part in order to do that. But you have to give tools to the, the teams because the company which works with uh, Agile culture, well, let's think about uh, the situation that they will work in the squads, right? They will not be influenced by top down. We we have a, a project where a project a product uh, owner will support them in order to establish the backlog. They will work in their uh, uh, sprints. Yeah, so they have to know how to do that. Understand, right? So we have to teach, have to establish these teams. So OKR, I think, is the best way to start because when you establish the objectives and then you have the key results, which are the metrics, so that you can track that if see if they are getting efficient or not, you know, by the time. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, um, Alexandre. I think uh, we're done with the questions for today i i want to really thank you um for for the space for the information spread with uh with search to prop and the community of search to prop and for all of you the attendees uh it's a great pleasure to have you here and we expect to keep having you in the upcoming learning lab sessions uh with search to prop and thank you thank you very much uh alexandre it's my pleasure Thank you. And thank you once again, all of you. Thank you very much. We'll keep in touch. And we hope to have you in the next uh, Learning Love session. session. Stay safe, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Agradecemos a quienes nos acompañaron en este espacio y esperamos que haya sido de inspiración para promover el conocimiento y crecimiento profesional de nuestra comunidad. 